like to bring up to stage now uh, Joey Van Elsick from the Port of Amsterdam. <laughs> So thank you, Paul. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joey van Elswijk, um, and it's a pleasure being here today, being able to present you the latest bio-based developments in, uh, in the port of Amsterdam. But before I will rush into my slides, because I only have 10 minutes, I think, and maybe even less, um, I'd like to give you and provide you some context about our ambition and about where we are standing as Port of Amsterdam to become a renewable hub and a renewable port and a sustainable port. Because as some of you might know, um, the Port of Amsterdam is at the moment also still a fossil-based port. Um, we handled last year 40 million tons of transport fuels, merely fossil-based. We handled 13 million tons of coal. I don't have to explain it fossil-based. So how can we say that we are actually a home and a perfect home for bio-based and low-carbon activities as well? That is what I will try to explain in short uh, today, uh, possibly tomorrow if you will visit us at our stand, MS10. Um, but that is also the challenge we are standing for uh, and also uh, a very nice objective. So in short, the Port of Amsterdam, um, we are a multi-purpose port. We are a true commodity port, so traders use our port facilities to store, distribute and trade their products. Um, whether it's soft commodities like cocoa, like, um, like coffee, whether it's minerals, uh, whether it's uh, uh, transport fuels, um, we are a true commodity type of port. But we are growing in the field of bio-based and circular activities, and we want to grow further. And that's why we are here today as well. So over the past 20 years, we've been able to grow into the fourth port of Europe. Uh, we experienced a, a steep uh, a growing curve, um, and we're now the fourth port of Europe. And that means that roughly uh, we handle in between 70 up to 80 million tons of goods every year. Um, we host uh, 7,500 seagoing vessels every year, we host 70,000 inland vessels every year, and we offer employment in the region and in the city of Amsterdam to 70,000 people. So we are a big port, um, but our challenge is maybe even bigger. So what we want, and that is the 65% for 2025, we want to achieve at least to have 65% of our revenues to be accounted by non-fossil activities. And you might say 65%, how much is that? Well, 10 years ago, it was exactly the other way around. So 10 years ago, um, 65 or even 70% of our revenue was from fossil-based revenues and activities within our port. So if we achieve this and we are well underway, then we would have been able to already flip that coin. And we were in 65% um, depending on non-fossil activities in two years' time from now. And we are well underway. So because of investments and because of the efforts of our clients, um, we already have become quite a large bio-based cluster. Um, and we are very proud to name these companies because um, these are our clients, and they've been able to grow over the past years and to grow with us in this bio-based uh, segment. So, for example, um, we have a huge biofuel cluster of Argent Energy, Greenergy, and soon to become also Advanced Methanol Amsterdam. Um, we have three waste-to-energy plants. We have biogas facilities, and the first bio-LNG facility uh, of the Netherlands was opened last year in, uh, in, uh, in the port of Amsterdam. And we have multiple project developments coming up. Um, and we are also very proud to be a host and be a home for starting companies as well, just like Chaincraft, um, just like uh, Nordsol, and just like Sinkiro. 
We're very proud that they start their businesses also in Amsterdam, so we don't focus only on the bigger fish. And actually, these companies have recognized some conditions, some favorable market conditions within the Port of Amsterdam. Of course, as fourth port of Europe, uh, we have excellent infrastructure. Uh, we have good um, connectivity with the rest of Europe, um, and our infrastructure is up to par. But the city of Amsterdam is also providing some additional elements to that. Because being close to a city like Amsterdam, it also means that you're an attractive place uh, to work, and that the labor force can be very close and nearby as well. It can also be a market outlet. The city can be a market outlet for your bio-based product. Um, and last but not least, the city can provide feedstock, whether it's organic waste, whether it's household waste, whether it's plastics, whether it's textiles, whether it's coffee grounds. Um, it can be available within the port vicinity, but also within the city facilities. So that is what is interesting also about this port and city collaboration. And we feel that we are able to grow also the coming years. Um, and that's also why we launched our strategy and relaunched our strategy to become actually one of the leaders and one of the forefront of this transition into a sustainable society. Um, but that also requires something from us. Because we don't own feedstocks. We don't own technologies. We are not uh, a company that produces products ourselves. But what is it that we can do? Uh, we know uh, it is a very tough journey to finally set up your first pilot scale plant or your first commercial plant. You need to deal with your technology. You need to deal with investors. You need to deal with, hopefully not so much, lawyers, consultants. Um, you need to deal with subsidy schemes, uh, governmental agencies. Pretty much a lot of the people are here actually in this room. Uh, so what can a port authority do? We can do, and we want to do, and we promise to do these three things. We want to optimize and we want to offer dedicated space. We want to invest, and we are able to invest in infrastructure. And we want to bring, and we are able to bring parties together. Of course, space. Uh, we own the land and we can lease out land. But space is actually rather scarce in Northwestern European ports. Um, so, if we want to become less and less dependent of, of the fossil industry, then we need to have space for the bio-based and circular industry. So, we said, okay, we reserve space within our port area at the best sites for these developments to take place. And whether it's a small, smaller scale first pilot installation, or whether it's a big renewable fuels plant of 15 hectares or larger, um, it should be available within our port area and within our port boundaries. <clears throat> Secondly, of course, you need utilities. You need the infrastructure. You need to get your plant running. So you need electricity. You might need um, carbon infrastructure or in the future hydrogen, hydrogen infrastructure. So we are already anticipating on these developments and we are already investing together with parties and partners um, in, in new type of energy infrastructure. But sometimes the hardware or the infrastructure isn't good enough. Um, you might know that in the Netherlands we're actually suffering from electricity con congestion. And the electricity grid is quite congested, it is already full. So if you want to have a new connection, it could actually be quite troublesome. So what we say, okay, then we also need to actively solve that issue and we need to invest in battery systems on the supply side or we need to invest and cooperate on the demand side to flatten out the electricity demand. So that's how we also cooperate and invest in solutions uh, to cope with these challenges. And finally, uh, we are a big port, so our network is very extensive. Um, and we are able to bring parties together. And we believe that as a bio-based developer or producer, you shouldn't be there on your own. You should integrate and be able to integrate with the port community that is already there and that is already very strong. And they can help you with um, sourcing out uh, various type of services and activities. So you don't have to worry about 
storing uh, your feedstock. You don't have to worry about storing your end product. Um, you hopefully don't have to worry about the utilities or other connections you want to have or want to make. Um, so that's why we are a matchmaker as well. That was a very short story about how we as Port of Amsterdam try to become a better port than we are today. Um, and if you want to take on that journey and become part of that better port, then please reach out to me or my colleague Anna-Marie. We are here today and tomorrow at our meeting stand 10. Thank you. <laughs>